Welcome to the first episode of our 24th series, everyone. This series, we had the pleasure of sitting down with Lucian Khan, designer of the game we're going to be covering this series, Visigoths vs. Malgoths. But first, some announcements as usual. We're less than two weeks away from the Descent into Midnight Kickstarter launch. We are both very, very excited for this game, if you couldn't tell. And it's proving to be one heck of a lead up to the Kickstarter. Right now, for every 100 follows on the Kickstarter page, they are releasing another piece of playbook art on their Twitter feed. Uh, so definitely give their Kickstarter a follow because it'd be awesome to see some, some of that ahead of time. Uh, there's also a few other things going on and everything on their Twitter feed is just top notch right now. So uh, if you love the ocean, uh, even if you're frightened of the ocean, uh, definitely check it out because it is uh, something absolutely spectacular and special. Another thing to keep in mind is that the podcast that I've been editing lately, A Horror Borealis, and its parent podcast, The Cryptic Keeper, are still doing a Patreon drive to work towards some really great bonus content. Uh, they call this the Year of the Moth, uh, which once they hit 2020, in terms of the monthly pledge on their Patreon, they'll actually fly everybody out uh, from the podcast out to uh, where the Mothman Festival is and record the Mothman episode for the Cryptic Keeper. I, for one, am really interested in hearing more a horror Borealis content, so definitely check them out if you are able to assist. So, with all of that out of the way, let's get on with the episode. We hope you enjoy it as much as we enjoyed recording it. Welcome to Character Creation Cast, a show where we discuss and create characters, the best part of role-playing games, with guests using their favorite systems. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan, and this episode, my co-host Amelia and I are thrilled to welcome Lucian Khan, designer of the game we are covering this episode, Visigoths vs. Malgoth. Welcome to Character Creation Cast. We're really excited you could join us. Thank you so much. I'm very excited to be here. <laughs> So let's start by introducing you to our audience. Lucian, can you tell us a bit more about yourself and any projects you are currently involved in? So I am a game designer. Um, I live in Brooklyn, um, but I'm originally from Los Angeles. Um, I have a great big chonky cat that um, you will see if you follow me on Twitter. <laughs> it's a um, good chonky cat. Uh -huh. Really so good. large, large and in charge. My cat. Her name is Beastie. Um, oh, what a good name! <laughs> what a good thank name. you. <laughs> what a great name for a chonky cat. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, and um, I have a bunch of games things I will tell you about. Um, so I am the designer of Visigoths versus Malgoths. Um, it is, um, in production right now. We're almost ready to release it. Um, it was double funded on Kickstarter, so that's exciting. Um, and it is currently in pre-orders. Um, so if you want to get in on that early, um, it's available on backer kit. Um, you can just Google Visigoths versus Malgoths. Shockingly, it is the only thing that will come up. Um, <laughs> and you'll be able to find the, uh, the pre-order, um, for that. Um, I also designed a game called Dead Friend, a game of necromancy, um, which is available online and in stores. Um, it's about um, the relationship between a wizard or witch and a ghost, um, and it uses tarot cards for um, randomization mechanics. It's a very spooky and fun storytelling game. Mm -hmm. 
Um, another thing that I have that's coming out soon, um, I have a game called Grandma's Drinking Song, which is um, based on my family's stories. Um, my great great grandmother was, in fact, a bootlegger during Prohibition. Oh, wow. Um, oh, so cool. Yeah. So um, it's based on my um, grandma and great aunt's stories from their grandma, who is the one experiencing all of this. Um, and um, it's a singing game, it involves role playing and singing. Um, and it is coming out soon as part of an anthology called Doi Kite, a Jewish TTRPG anthology. Oh, that's um, so if you Google that or just a Jewish TTRPG anthology, you will find that coming up. Also, um, I am the co-editor of an upcoming games anthology that is very adults only, so I won't go into that in too much detail, um, but it is called Honey and Hot Wax, and you can look for that coming up soon from Pelgrane Press, um, probably in the next uh, few months, like spring or summer of um, 2020. And you can always follow me on Twitter to find out about my new projects. My Twitter is O underscore Theogony. It's O H underscore T-H-E-O-G-O-N-Y. It is a pun that is hard to spell, and I should have thought about podcasts <laughs> before I chose it. <laughs> so, like, what do you do for fun in your spare time? Or <laughs> Do you no? even oh have God. spare time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what's what's uh, spare time? I don't understand. <laughs> I do actually, um, I really like to watch, um, like, all kinds of TV shows that involve, um, like creative competitions with weird constraints. Um, and it doesn't matter what kind. So I love like Master Chef or Project Runway or so any this of these. Is a thing like that fascinates me is because like my dad is, you know, like the straightest Midwestern straight man ever. And yeah. he and I have bonded so much over watching Project Runway. Oh my God. My yes. dad is a sucker for like any kind of competition. That's amazing. And of course, like I'm like fashion's great. And I love yeah. competition too. But it's people are always like, your dad watches that? And I was like, no, because it's competitive. <laughs> That's so interesting. <laughs> That's really show. interesting. For me, it's actually not about either of those things. I'm actually just interested in like weird design constraints. Mm. Yeah. Um, so I'm just like, oh, wow, these people have like a time limit and some unusual design constraints. I wonder right. what they'll do. So I love Which watching I those. As a game designer, I didn't even think about that, though. Mm -hmm. Like as a game yeah. designer. Probably yeah, exactly. That's what's that so interesting to me. Like... So I'm like, oh, my God, a mystery basket. I wonder what they'll do with these four <gasps> oh, ingredients. Yes. Like that's really interesting to me. I, I really like somebody needs to make a chopped role playing game, and I know there are a couple people that have like tried to like gamify it, and I don't know if it's ever really like come down to it. I mean, but I guess like chopped is also maybe just a role playing game, but like yeah, totally. Someone put like more rules on it and let me play it, or I guess I could just play it at my house and I don't need someone to write rules. But if they <laughs> I could, think that'd be great. <laughs> I think there are a few, but I haven't I haven't investigated them either. So like if anybody listening dice, to this, so yeah, mm -hmm. totally. If anybody listening to this is is doing it, I actually recently was thinking, um. I would like to make a role playing game where you roll a roll, like a dinner roll. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> um, and I thought about a few ideas. I was like, I could call it Red Bread Redemption. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. Know your role. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ooh. Um, but I don't know. So, when is the competition uh, reality TV show where game designers have to design RPGs based on different weird constraints? I would I would one hundred percent go on that show. Yeah. I think a lot of people, a lot of my friends and colleagues, I think would find that very stressful. Um, but I am deep in my heart an extremely whimsical person, um, and I think I would actually really enjoy being a contestant on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think people would have a tough time not like being able to play test things and really think them out, to, like to try and do it under those constraints. I think yeah, people would have a hard yeah. time with that. Absolutely, and like obviously, we all have different like working styles and how we design things. Mm -hmm. Totally, but I would watch the crap out of that show. I think oh, I yeah, would be so too would stressed I. to be on it. But, yeah, I'm like desperate to be a contestant on that. That would be really fun for me. All right, let's make this show. And then... <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but actually, that's not what we're doing. So we're gonna go ahead and get into our actual episode, and we're gonna start talking about what this game is all about. Excellent. What's in a game? <laughs> So since this is a newer game, can you give us a quick pitch for the game, uh, like the genre setting and all that sort of fun stuff? 
Yes. Okay. So my standard pitch sentence is as follows. Visigoths versus Molgoths is a tabletop role-playing game and dating sim about the conflicts and romances among the warriors who sacked ancient Rome and 20th century spooky teens (laughs) set in a shopping mall in a Los Angeles suburb in 1996. There are a lot of bisexuals. (laughs) <laughs> um, so that's my like pitch that I always say. Um, it is, I would say, um, suburban fantasy. Um, it is surrealist. It is comedic. Um, and um, it it really um, puts you into a kind of like mid 90s um, teen movie nostalgia kind of zone. Um, so it um, might feel a lot like movies such as um, The Craft, Empire Records, Bill and Ted, Clueless. Mm. It's that sort of feeling. Um, and yeah, that's our short pitch. That's amazing. Oh, I'm Thank so you. For that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I was looking through the character sheets when I was prepping the outline, and I, I saw a question on time travel for the Visigoths, and I was like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh. Um, yeah, there is time travel involved. So, like, part of the premise of of this situation is that, um, like. The Visigoths, who are the um, the folks who um, sacked Rome um, in around 410, mm-hmm. um, were just kind of doing their own thing, living their lives. And then um, some Molgoths um, with a Ouija board accidentally <laughs> um, yes. summoned this whole community of Visigoths into <laughs> 1996. Um, so now there's kind of like a weird turf war um, over like who is going to have cultural control over the local suburban mall. Oh, that's amazing. I mean, a- as happens, we've all yep. been there. We've all been exactly. There. Yep. You know. Exactly. I assume that this is like taken from your actual real life growing. Obviously, up. I mean, I, I had yeah. a lot of problems with um, with Visigoth. Um, <laughs> yep. No, not. not it's, it's a really <laughs> tough thing that like a lot yes. of kids deal with, and I think we need to talk more about it. It's a trope for <laughs> exactly. A reason. Exactly. <laughs> um, but it is true um, that I was, in fact, a um, like a queer teenager in the 90s in Los Angeles. Um, and I was um, I, I was technically right. If you had asked anybody at the time, technically, I was grunge, not goth. <laughs> um, and they cared a lot about that at the time. Yeah. Now, nobody cares. Um, I don't know. But I feel like they still do, though, because like, I, I do feel they like care again? One of those like adjacent kind of things, because I was not a goth. I hung out yeah. with the goths, but I was a punk. And that was right. different. That like, is. Yeah, exactly. So. I was. I was properly, I was grunge. I was in grunge bands. I was a guitar player. Um, I was really in that world. Um, but I was goth adjacent. I did go to goth clubs. When I went to goth clubs, I dressed goth appropriate. Um, and, you know, anybody anybody that you actually, like, if I start telling you about what I actually did for fun in the 90s, you're like, but you were goth, though. It's like, I was obsessed with Sandman comics. I played Vampire the Masquerade. I listened to Bauhaus. Like, Right, but you were you were adjacent. I was definitely goth adjacent. <laughs> yeah, and that is an important distinction. Exactly, and we care about this difference for reasons unknown. <laughs> right, right. That we we are sure that it'll matter later on. And some yeah, someone someone somewhere will care. Right. <laughs> what sort of things do we need to play this game? So, so like what kind of dice. What kind of. I don't know, yeah. pencils, a number two pencil, a number five. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you, you obviously need the game itself. Um, and then it's not a lot of stuff. You need, um, each player needs two six-sided dice, the kind that you can steal from a box of Parcheesi. Um, and, uh, you know, you need some paper and some writing implements, and that's about it. Um, it is important to note, you do need a weird sense of humor, and you do not need historical accuracy. Um, so, Do you need yeah. to be a goth? No, not at all. You don't of need to be, either variety, physical you don't, goth or... You don't need to be any kind of goth um, okay. at all. <laughs> all right. No. You don't even have to have been alive in the 90s, and you certainly don't have to have been alive in 410. Okay. <laughs> Well, I thought about that. I was like, who listening to this podcast wasn't alive during the 90s? And then I, I remember that like my younger siblings were not born in the 90s. They yeah. They were born in 2000 and 2001. Exactly. And if I you're, feel so old. If you're 18, you can just pick this up and, you know, read a little bit of background information about the subcultures and you should be good to go. Mm-hmm. Talk to your much older siblings yeah. and they'll tell you what it was like in the 90s. Exactly. <laughs> and this is a good callback for those immortals that are listening. 
Right? Yep. Yep. We like to include those those members of our audience who were in live in 410. <laughs> exactly. Being being mortal um, and living an average human lifespan is not required to play no. Visigoths versus Malgoths. <laughs> That's good to know. Yes. It's very inclusive. Uh-huh. I like yes. it. <laughs> so uh, what's what kind of uh, stories and themes uh, is this game meant to explore? Um, this this game has a lot. Of, well, first of all, let me tell you there are some there are some pre designed adventures in the back. So um, we have for you six adventure episodes written by um, me and other um, game designers, um, so that you have a couple of um, stories already ready to go. Um, if you don't want to come up with your own, of course you can also come up with your own. Um, but a lot of the stories have themes like um, you know. Teen, teen dating um, angst, right? Sort of like your your classic teen movie, like dating um, plot arcs. Not serious, you know. Sort of funny, whimsical ones. Um, you know, stories of um, being an outsider. Um, are really big in this game, right? Because both the Visigoths um, being, you know, displaced from their time um, and the Malgoths being Malgoths um, are sort of outsiders um, in the world that they're in. And so they're experiencing sort of being like the weirdos um, of this uh, suburb of LA um, and sort of um, navigating how they're weirdos in different ways. Um, And, um, you know, stories of like, um, getting up to antics in the mall, right? You can shoplift, you can buy things, you can get makeovers, you might encounter, um, you know, the all kinds of strange characters who show up in the mall. Um, I mean, a thing to know about this mall is um, I have fully designed a mall for you. So it's not <laughs> like, it's not like one of these... Um, you know, games where the players are really responsible for creating the setting. I have made a full mall with many stores and a ton of NPCs and um, all of the objects that are for sale that are special items in the mall. So you have available to you things like a bed and bath store called Hail Satin. Um, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> you have a um, a salon for humans and pets called Gerbil Essences. Um, <laughs> so it's it's full of all this kind of stuff, and we have characters available for you, and it tells you all of their um, you know good and things good and bad things about them, and it tells you who all of their um, best friends and exes are. So you can like flip to the back of the book to find out like what's all the drama between all the NPCs already. Oh, nice. um, it's like a deep sort of like this world exists. Um, and you can play around in it. How many nights were you awake coming up with the small? <laughs> 80 million zillion nights. Was that before or after you started designing this game? Did you make this game because you had already designed the small in your head? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it's a fair question. Um, <laughs> this, this, like many of my most successful artistic projects, did in fact start with a pun. Um, so it started with Visigoths versus Malgoths, um, and then everything else developed from that. Um, but I, I definitely did spend a lot of time and put a lot of work into um, the mall stores and the characters and all of the weird items that are available um, for sale. And there's a lot of like strange Easter eggs. Yeah, there's some good names in this mall. Mm-hmm. Like, there's, uh, it's very good. It's Thank you. <laughs> so, there's a there's a character n- named Thacko. Oh, um, of course there is. Yeah. <laughs> Why wouldn't there be? <laughs> what do characters do in this game? Like, what is your what is your goal here? Yeah. Um, so it depends on um, the adventure. It, this game is very playable as a sandbox. Um, so you could just like mess around and see what's in the mall. Um, but then the the structured adventure episodes have some set goals. Like, for example, um, the first episode um, is called, quote, The Raven Whatever. Um, and... <laughs> <laughs> um, it has like a couple of plot lines. Like there's there's been a kidnapping. This um, this goth this uh, mall goth named Raven Goldberg has gone missing. Um, the Visigoths are offering a ransom for him. So there's this whole like 
kidnapping ransom scenario and then like there's this whole other thing where everybody's gotten um emails with a bunch of 90s style purity tests um being emailed to them and so like you can decide what you want to do with it like do you want to try to do all the things on the purity test do you want to like protest and say this is immoral do you want to like you know get mad about the purity test um there's like also you know a, a big like cute valentine's day skate coming up so you might have the goal of like trying to find a date Mm. um so you could like flirt with other um players or you could flirt with npcs and like see if anybody wants to go um to the like skating sort of dance with you um so i tried to give you in all of the adventure episodes um some different types of goals right so like you if you're more interested in doing a like classic sort of um you know, solve the mystery or like, um, you know, adventure and battle sort of goal. You could follow that sort of plot line. Or if you're more interested in like doing the sort of like teen dating, flirting sort of um, like go to the dance sort of a story, you could pursue that more. Very cool. Yeah. So uh, we heard a lot of things that were kind of unique about uh, Visigoths versus Malgas. Uh, but what would you say is uh, one of the more unique things uh, that we haven't discussed yet, if any? Uh, yeah. Um, so I'll talk about two things that I think are unusual about this game. Um, one is um, the concept of embarrassing traits. Um, so every, um, every character, every player character, um, has, uh, these embarrassing traits and you pick them from a pick list, um, at the beginning of the game. Um, and they have a mechanical function. So, um, the way this works is that, um, at like once per scene, um, you can embarrass yourself to make one of your friends look cool in comparison. So it's kind of like a distraction um, mechanism. Um, and um, like the way that this works um, ends up being really funny, right? It's an opportunity for um, for players to like show off what is funny and awkward about their own characters um, in order to give um, like a role bonus to somebody else. Oh, nice. um, so that sort of, it, it, serves two functions, right? It has this mechanical function of like, it's a helping mechanism where you can help a friend. Um, but it's, it also gives you an opportunity to show off sort of like a funny teen awkwardness thing about your own character, which can be really fun for role play. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's one thing. Um, and I think it's one of the things that um, sort of helps players make jokes and be funny um, in a way that's like very supported. Cause I have suggestions for you of like how you might play up your own embarrassing traits. So people who are less comfortable making jokes and like being funny have a little bit of support for that. Um, and it's also just an opportunity to, to help a friend. So that's one thing. Cool. Um, and another thing that I think is unique is um, the, the way that damage works in the game is very unusual. Um, so most in most games um, when you fight, um, you are tracking physical damage, right? How much harm is, is being done to your body. Um, but in Visigoths versus Malgoths, we don't care about physical damage. We're not tracking it. We're only tracking emotional damage. Mm. Um, so what you get instead is hurt feelings. Um, and it's done in a way that's like very sort of jokey emo, right? It's playing up the fact that we have these like melodramatic goth teens and what they care about is whether or not their feelings are hurt, not whether or not like someone, you know, gave them a cut on their arm. Right. Mm-hmm. So anything can happen in the physical world, but um, those things sort of operate like, um, you know, an anvil falls on Wiley e. coyote and he's fine. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so we're not even tracking. We don't care about physical damage. Um, instead, you know, the, the damage that we're tracking is like, did you, you know, did you embarrass somebody? Did you like hurt somebody's feelings? Um, how bad do you feel about the fact that you just, you know, stabbed that guy in the arm or whatever? Um, so um, it's sort of shifting the focus of damage to like how, how bad you feel. That's awesome. Yeah. Which is fun. And it's, it's not like the way it ends up playing out um, in game tends to be humorous, right? Mm. It's like, it's like, and you know, you win your role. And so you, um, you know, you punch Brunhilde, right? Um, But then it's like, 
well, how do you, like, you feel kind of bad about it, right? You feel bad that you punched Brunhilde, and Brunhilde feels bad, right? Everyone's feelings are hurt, not just the person who got hurt, <laughs> right? Um, and that's, like, part of the mechanics is that, like, when you physically attack someone, both you and the person you attacked both get hurt feelings. Um, oh. So it's like, you just punched Brunhilde, like, how do you feel about it? And, like, maybe you feel guilty, or maybe you still feel mad, or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it sort of escalates the humor, um, as you're, as you're going through these, these battles. Let's talk a little bit about the history of this game. Normally we talk about like how many editions there have been and we read the Wikipedia article. Um, but this is obviously a new game. So I want to talk a little bit about like why you made this game, where there's specific feelings you wanted to capture, like what has that process been like? All that kind of stuff. Tell yeah. me everything. <laughs> yeah, this is really like a pure love letter to um, teen ca counterculture in the 90s in mm -hmm. LA. Like, this is really a, like, I had this really interesting experience in my teens of, like, running around Los Angeles, being a, like, weirdo teenager, and, like, you know, I came out as bisexual when I was 13, and it was, like, 1995, um, and I was, like, running around Melrose, which at the time was, like, very goth and punk, and, like, going to goth clubs and, you know, flirting and doing all these things. And like, I wanted to capture some of the fun and humor and, and weirdness and cultural written richness of this time and place. Um, so it really is very autobiographical in that way. Um, but it's like autobiographical about a period of time. Um, and like what the counterculture was like, um, for like certain kinds of teens in, in the nineties. Um, so that's, that's like the heart of the game. Mm -hmm. And then also this sort of like, like fun, whimsical aspect of a lot of the role-playing games that I was playing at the time, um, which a lot of them were, um, were computer games. Um, so I was very heavily inspired by earthbound, um, which if you played it, it was a super Nintendo game, um, that is, um, like it's, it's a computer, like a Nintendo role-playing game. Um, and it has a lot of like funny counterculture things. Like you'll be suddenly fighting against like, um, hippies or like old men with golf clubs or whatever. And it's, it has this kind of like funny counterculture, like, like smirking at, um, at like popular culture kind of vibe that nevertheless is not mean hearted. It's very like, like endearing and warm hearted at the same time. Um, so I was very inspired by earthbound. I was very inspired by um, Planescape torment mm -hmm. and, and like that sort of era of games, some of the humor of fallout too. Um, so like all of these kind of um, like mid nineties, um, like open world, um, role playing games with like lots of dialogue trees. That's amazing. Oh, I love those kinds of games, and I yeah, they're play so enough good. Of them. I need to, I need to play more of those kinds. Of we should just start over and just <laughs> go back and play all of those games from our childhood. Oh. I will just, I, I could literally, like, I'm not a podcaster, but if I had a podcast, it would probably just be like, let me tell you every obscure detail of all of the like open world, mm -hmm. uh, mid '90s role playing games that were on computers because I that was my whole thing not even like that kind of game but literally last night i said to my sister man you know what game i really would love to play roller coaster tycoon oh my god yes <laughs> <laughs> i could play that game again yeah and she was like okay that's a throwback so i was trying to explain carmen amazing. san diego to my kids because now they have the cartoon on netflix too. oh I was like, yeah no it used to be all these games and then there was like a game show like i'm trying to explain they're like looking at me like i have three heads like yeah. it was it mom. was really good though it was a really it good was game. it was really good yeah it's funny you mentioned Roller Coaster Tycoon because I was actually also inspired by um, by The Sims 3. Um, yes. I, I thought a lot about The Sims 3 as I was making this game because it's like, okay, you have an open world. You're like designing all these characters. It's kind of Barbies, but it's kind of not Barbies, mm -hmm. right? And it's like... Um, you know, I, you, you can like follow these career tracks. So there are like possibilities of having some like predefined narratives, or you can just ignore that and like do your own sandboxy thing. So I was very inspired by the, by the structure of that game as well. Nice. Oh, 
That's so cool. I love all of those games. We should just play more of those games. Let's make a 100. podcast about that too. Oh, one hundred percent, yes. <laughs> please, please invite me back, and I will. I will not even talk about Visigoths versus Malgoths. I'll just talk about like, and here are all the gay things you can do in Fallout Two. Oh, okay. Fallout right. Two has so many great, great things. <sighs> I haven't played phenomenal. The only one I've played is four. Yeah. Fallout Two is a masterpiece. Yeah, I'd say Fallout Two is probably one of the best of the series. It's okay. Just extraordinary. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get on that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's it's not first person. It's uh, it's an isometric no. overhead view of the the it sweet is. sweet 90s graphics. All right. Fa- Fallout 2 contains a gay shotgun wedding, and it was made in like 1997. Yeah. Oh, that's incredible. It's just it's really incredible. Good. It's, it's really so good. good. <laughs> okay. So should we get into this? Yes. Yes. Do the thing. I, yeah, I think we covered uh, the basic terms that uh, that I had questions about the the hurt feelings and embarrassing traits. Uh, is there any other terms that we need to know before uh, we jump into character creation? I don't think so. I think we're good to go. Perfect. So let's do this. Yeah, let's make some people. Yes. Let's make some people. Let's make some people. Let's make some people. Um. I'm curious what um, character types you're planning on making, because I have we have six available. Mm-hmm. Should I talk about them? Yeah, yes, if you could, please. please. Okay, let me open my thing. Um, so there are six types of um, characters that you can make. There are three Visigoth types and three Molgoth types. Um, so the Visigoths available are Conqueror, Charlatan, and Runecaster. And the Molgoth types available are theater tech. Yes, correct. Wit, witch, and cyber pet. Um, and let me just clarify, because people are always like, what is a cyber pet? Cyber pet is, it's still a person, but it's basically like a, um, like a Tamagotchi style furry. Oh. Okay. All right. Yeah. Te- te- so you're like a, you're like a. You're like a person in a in an animal costume, but the style is very like the '90s idea of futuristic. So, like, um, oh which God. I'm calling cyber in the sense of like in the '90s, everything that involved the internet yeah. was called cyber, mm-hmm. like to make it sound cool and futuristic. So that's what cyber pet is. I love it. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, hmm. So, I mean, the first question then is: Are you going to be a Malgoth or Visigoth? Right. Uh, yes. There was one in particular so. that really jumped out for me. Okay, Ryan, what what is it? Uh the cyber pet. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh I'm trying to look over here and see what I mean, obviously I'm going to go for either witch or runecaster. That's just like obvious. That's pretty on brand. Yeah. Well, yeah. since since there are two of you, do you want to pick a Visigoth? Well, you have to make a character, too. Oh, I'm making one, too. Okay, cool. Yeah, we're all making characters. Great. I didn't know I got to make one, too. That's exciting. Mm-hmm. Yes. Great. Yeah, okay. we're going to force you to play your own game. Great. Perfect. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I'm going to go with a rune caster. I'm going to make a Visigoth. Mm-hmm. Great. Um, I think I want to make... I'm going to make a theater tech. I'm just going to play... I'm going to play a little closer to home. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you for joining us for part one of this character creation series. We'll be back in part two, picking up right where we left off. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. 
If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. We gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you'll find other great shows like Neo Scum. Neo Scum is a narrative comedy podcast featuring five Chicago improvisers antagonizing their way through the role playing classic Shadowrun. It follows a group of misfits and outsiders. Z, the acerbic cyber troublemaker. Pox, the candy junkie klepto from across the pond. Tech Wizard, the public access actor with a petulant thirst for adventure. And Dak Rambo, the nastiest trucker this side of the Robo Mason Dixon. Join the irascible Neo Scum crew on a puerile rockin' road trip through a weirdo world of tomorrow, doling out street justice to every deeb they encounter, whether they deserve it or not.